This is the this is the charge controller. All right, so these are the blades. What does it do? These are the blades, and do you think they'll kill a lot of bugs? Build a wind generator. Wind generator. Finally, after all these years, I can finally build a wind generator. Yeah, this is a huge Allen wrench. Okay, I did. I do have a, a lightning rod somewhere. Dad, are you littering? You're trying to kill the turtles? So are these all the same? Yes. Seven, eight. Okay, so ten. This was stupid. I'm stupid. Let's build all the blades on here. Okay, so I... Shh. I have to go... Okay, there you go. And that way... Um, yep. okay. It's sad that uh, there's no wind today. Can you hold this, Dad? Okay. What does a wind turbine do? So my plan, so this is called uh, the Little Ripper. <laughs> I, I love this thing great for clearing the coating off this wire. What, what did I just do? Just slid it. Oh, isn't that's it, so cool. Isn't that great? So, I'm not sure if this is the right gauge wire. I don't think it probably is. Well, when it starts on a fire, we'll know it wasn't big enough. Mm -hmm. So this has, this is a wire stripper. It has different numbers on it. Those are the gauge, the thickness of the wire. It's called gauge. Okay. Um, this is a 12 gauge wire, so we'll use the 12 gauge. And all you do is just pinch it in there. Is that a cut set? And then, that's close too. And then you just pull it out. Yep. You're littering! Okay, my original plan was to just use this as three conductor, but I failed to realize that this one doesn't have a... I didn't think about that. This doesn't have sheathing on it, so it's going to touch the side of this pipe and it's going to ground out. And so we can't use this. So what I'm going to do is something really cool. Whenever you say that, it's not cool. Is that your favorite little tool? It's one of them. Well, my, I have a two inch pole here. This came in the packaging. I don't know if this is actually for this or not, but it might work. I was trying to make an extra spacer with this copper wire. It's a little too, too small. All right. Well, where are we gonna put it? Right here. All right, we got the garden tracks, post hole digger. go in the ground then the pole goes in the post well welcome back to the SSL family dad channel we have been hard at work here my my partner and I <laughs> we have the Vivor we got a, a new wind generator this is a 500 watt wind generator and I have a pole a, a 10 foot galvanized pole that I had laying around here it's a two inch pole uh, ran some wire down there that uh, I think is going to be heavy enough gauge for this we'll see i've got the new garden tracks post hole digger out just fired up for the first time so what i did uh, i had a piece of post laying around and this is all just kind of a test so we're going to see how well this whole setup works and what i did was uh, i drilled out the top of this this uh, four by four uh, using a combination of a hole saw and a chisel and uh, some spade bits some paddle bits um, to just kind of chisel out all of the, the center of this so that the two inch pole will fit in there. And that goes all the way down, uh, just goes down to about a foot. And then I have a little exit hole here for the wires to come out. So what I'll do is I'll put the charge controller and a, a little battery box right at the bottom of this pole, uh, right at the bottom of the wind generator. That way I can have um, my inverters and all that kind of stuff right here where I can plug in and, and use power down here. The problem is, is we're pretty far away from the house. The house is way up there. There's no power coming out here. 
and of course I could run a line out here at some point but I'd like to just do all off grid down here I'll have a greenhouse eventually in this area I use my solar generator down here a lot I need you know power equipment other things down here sometimes for the garden and eventually this is where we do our maple syrup I'm gonna have a sugar shack built here and so I'd like to put some solar panels and wind and other things to, to kind of power this whole area so we have the, the wind generator all put together. Basically it comes in with the blades and the hub and uh, you just put that together uh, as you saw Summer and I doing. Attach it to a, a pole. I'm not sure exactly what size pole it's meant to fit on. This is a two inch piece of pipe and it was a little too small as you saw there. So now I just need to take this, feed the wires into my post over there and uh, set this down into it and hook things up and see if it works. Well, I just realized I forgot to put the uh, little nose cone on. <laughs> nope sit 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 nope stay away you're all wet well we have a, a temporary setup for it at least we've got uh, got it mounted got it in the air and wired up to a, a little deep cycle battery this is just a battery I've had around laying around for for years and I'm not sure how, how great it works, but once I know this location is gonna work, then I will uh, kind of fortify this up a little bit. So I'll add uh, uh, maybe a little box here down here, a weatherproof box where I can add my uh, batteries in. I'm gonna get a few uh, probably lithium batteries or some other deep cycle batteries to add in here so I can have a good storage of, of energy down here. It comes with this little charge controller. This was part of the, the package. Um, and it's a it's a just a cheap little charge controller. <laughs> it has uh, uh, the three leads. Uh, it's a three phase, I believe, 12 volt. And then this so this this these three wires just come from the the wind turbine. And it doesn't really matter which one's which. They're all the same. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, which one gets plugged into which which uh, lead here. And then you just have a, a 12 volt uh, battery hookup coming out, red and black. And that's just hooked up to the battery. So it's really simple, and I'm sure this will work just fine. Only thing left to do now is wait for some wind. Well, here it sits, not moving. I have found that this is the only place on our property that does not get any wind, no matter what. And of course we are sort of by trees, but I, I swear, I really thought that the wind would kind of blow through this valley or through this, you know, open area right here and kind of up the hill uh, to the house, but that did not happen. So there were storms that I swear there was 50 mile an hour winds, the trees moving and, and swaying everywhere. And, and this thing <laughs> is barely would turn at all. And so uh, this is just not a good spot for it. We just don't have a great spot here and I'm gonna have to install it somewhere up on the top of the hill or up at the house. So I wanna test this thing still. How could I get this thing to spin I know.
Okay, so I hooked the the uh, I hooked the meter leads directly up to the wires coming out of the charge controller. I don't know if you're supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so it is giving some charge. There it is. Okay. What is it? It's at two point nine volts. Now it's at nine volts. So that worked, and it did register. So it, it said nine volts was the it highest, registered right? registered up to, well, it was 10 volts total. 10 volts, okay. Um, but I think if we get going down this hill, I don't know how fast this thing goes. Let's say we were only going probably like 15 miles an hour. Yeah, probably, or maybe more. And so, all right, ready? Okay, here we go. Okay, <laughs> I don't know if that's good for it to run it without yeah, load like that, so. But How it, much did it go? It went up to 10 volts here, but I think really? it's because it's not hooked to the battery. Okay. Quite a contraption. I guess the one thing this would be actually useful for is if you wanted to do remote and mobile uh, type work, you could just leave it strapped to a vehicle, take it out into your farm field or, or something if you're working and uh, have it charge up some batteries for you. But <laughs> obviously this isn't super practical. Well, <laughs> it worked. Uh, we did get up. I didn't have my camera uh, to show the meter. Uh, you guys were on the side of the road watching us drive by, but when we got coming down those hills, uh, it got a good clip, uh, probably 15 plus miles an hour. I'm guessing we're coming down the hill probably at about 20. It's about as fast as that golf cart will go. Uh, and you could really feel the drag of the, of the wind generator. It was really pulling the golf cart back. Uh, it was struggling a little bit to get up those hills when the wind was blowing on it, but we probably at full clip at 15, 20 miles an hour, it, it was measuring 12.6 12.7 volts on the meter, which means it would charge the battery. So pretty neat. I've always wanted to have a wind generator and uh, apparently I need to find a better place to install it. And so I will do that at a later time. We'll look around here at putting putting it up on the top of the house, which is behind you guys, or maybe on the side of this farm field where we get a wind. I need to get a wind uh, measure measuring tool when it was a breezy day and go around and take some measurements and uh, see where we can put this thing. Obviously, uh, just a little fun with the golf cart. This actually does not power the golf cart. Th those of you who, who know the answer, you can comment down below. Uh, this is a gas golf cart, but let's say it was an electric golf cart. Why would this never work? Why would you never, why, why could you never uh, actually power the golf cart with a wind generator? There's a, there's a physics law that prevents this and uh, I'll let you guys uh, comment down below if, if any of you knows the answer. Uh, this is the same that holds true to any of these centrifugal motion, infinite motion machines and uh, you know these infinite uh, energy machines that you see out there on YouTube that, that get all these views. Uh, there is a physical law that, that prevents those from actually uh, functioning. They are 100% uh, they scam. But the Vivor uh, wind generator is definitely not a scam. Seems to work pretty well, seems to be well built, and it is super cheap. If you have open space or you wanna power a barn or outbuildings or maybe a sugar shack that's away from your house or something like that, this would, I think this would work really well. It would work great here in Michigan in the off season, and that's why I bought it, because uh, generally in our fall and winters, they're windy, they're rainy, they're snowy, they're, you know, but this thing I think would work well in those environments. 
And maybe when the leaves fall off all the trees, it'll work better. Link in the description for the Vivor wind generator. Vivor.com, this website is my favorite website to shop on on the internet. It has all kinds of cool homesteading stuff. Uh, sometimes I just go and have fun looking at things. So, oh, almost forgot. New merch. It's been a long time coming. We got a new logo design. This, I'm the, I'm a family dad. Uh, if you get one off of our site, it will not have the YouTube logo on the bottom. This didn't turn out very well, and so I took it off. But the I'm a family dad uh, t-shirts and sweatshirts are available on Teespring. If you click down below the YouTube video, this, the store should be down there for you, and you can uh, purchase those things, support the channel, and uh, let everybody know that you're a family dad. Don't forget to hit thumbs up. Love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.